Well, I'm sorry the whole conclave has gone home since you're now pointing out the very clauses in the Alibaba agreements in the relationship with their financial company well, and... These are, the, these are the SEC disclosures, their most recent SEC annual report. Ah, and that one sentence, look right. at that. I mean, what, what they're saying is they have complete control over everything, they can change it anytime they want, and if you're going to buy into this, realize it's not capitalism. It's Chinese totalitarianism built right into the program, right. and if you don't like it, it's no problem. You can either leave or they can kill you. So, so I invite you to read that first sentence. You mean on right here? Right here. No, you read it. Okay, well the bold says, we may be subject to liability for content available in our ecosystem that is alleged to be socially destabilizing, obscene, defamatory, libelous, and other or otherwise unlawful. And now read that first sentence. And anything not communism is socially destabilizing, which basically means that's the dragonfly clause. Where did you get that memo? It's right there, and it, they put it in bold, so they really okay. wanted to make sure that you got read, it. Read the second okay, sentence. Well, I, okay, let's see if I can read that. Under PRC law and the laws of certain other jurisdictions in which we operate, we are required to monitor our websites and the websites hosted on our servers and mobile interfaces, as well as our services and devices that generate or host content. For items or content deemed to be socially destabilizing, obscene like me, superstitious or defamatory, as well as for items, content, or services that are illegal to sell online or otherwise in any other jurisdiction in which we operate our marketplaces and promptly take appropriate action. Please answer that. That's the conflict. <laughs> uh, with respect to relevant items, content, or services. Okay, basically... That's that clause that makes them able to go in and literally arrest you for if they if you did much, anything they didn't like. It gets much more detailed than that. Let me, well, let me I find it. don't. I think they covered all the bases there. Socially destabilizing covers anything that isn't part of the party program. Like right? going into Catholic churches right now, tearing down any and, and Muslim church, Muslim mosques. They're tearing down anything that isn't directly related to China. So. Everything, like every religion, they are basically purging it. And so this isn't surprising that now they've learned, they set it up with these American co contracts, make American reports saying, it's all good, you can buy into Chinese uh, marketplace, and then what happens? The gold mine you just bought into doesn't exist. Okay, so then they've covered themselves in another way, in that, keep in mind, Alibaba Holdings is a Cayman Islands company. <laughs> I didn't know that. Not a Chinese <laughs> No. Okay. Now, no, wait a second. Now read this. Oh, I get paragraph. it. So China isn't going to pay any taxes because anybody buying into it has to go through a tax-free haven. And then when they pour their money from China into the tax-free haven, it's ways that the oligarchs get their kickback. Oh, this is beautiful. No, I did not know that. Okay, well, this, this relates to the information. Read that. They came in Ireland's company. Okay. Uh, well, Michael, this is like I'm in class, you know. What if I, well, what if I mispronounce a word? Well, the children are going to think I'm stupid. Here, I'll, As I'll, a came in Ireland. Oh, 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 oh now, now you made it big, so. I don't want to read this whole thing. There we go. As it's Cayman. easier to read it like that, right? Okay. As a Cayman Islands company, we are generally not required to comply with US, UK, and EU sanctions to the same extent as US, UK, or EU entities. In other words, we don't have to follow anybody's rules. You can't sanction us, Mr. President. So you can't control us economically. So anyone who would invest in this is a nutcase. It's kind of like buying Shanghai gold in the Shanghai gold market. If you're in the Shanghai economic zone, it's 70% uh, discount for all Chinese people. Think of that. Why would anyone do business there? 17%. Oh, okay. That's just, uh, Unbelievable. No, it's, uh, these kind of rules are made by nutcases trying to play capitalism and get capitalists to invest, but then what happens when they don't? it doesn't go their way? The Chinese do whatever they want and you lose. Okay. The house always wins in China. That's what they're saying. Well, only you can find these things interesting because anyone else reading this would have passed out from <laughs> boredom a long uh, time now, ago. Now, is this how your research team works, Michael? Yeah. During the day, oh, you know, y'all are down in the mines pulling up this research. How does that exactly. work? Exactly. It's, it's, it's like watching paint dry reading this stuff. It's exactly. This is, 
But, but you know, this stuff is, this is the exciting stuff when you, and you're going, oh, uh, well, let me think about what that even means. No, no, <laughs> and it's hard to even think about. I mentioned this all about our partnership, which is like over yeah. all the, yeah, the Supreme directors Committee. and yeah. officers. Read this uh, particular heading. Boy, I sure hope I get a good grade in reading this semester. The nomination, wait, the, the bold or the other one? The bold and the, the next one. The interests of the Alibaba Partnership may conflict with the interests of our shareholders. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, you can't make this so cool. Cool. No, that's what I was just saying. You don't have any, you buy into this, you're a nutcase, they're going to do whatever exactly. they want. Exactly. Hey, Dennis, can that's you kind of summarize what it is that we're looking at here for people who might have just dropped in on the audio? We're looking at the SEC uh, SEC filings, filings for the Alibaba. latest annual report for Alibaba. So that Alibaba can do business with a good U.S. who better. It said back there, well, we don't really listen to. So any that they you. can take investments from American investors. Yeah, it's always so. good when you don't talk over each other. Oh well, we're having too much fun. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. sorry. You shouldn't allow me to have that extra cappuccino and that gluten-free, dairy-free <laughs> cheesecake. The nomination and appointment rights of the Alibaba partnership limit the liabilities for our shareholders to influence corporate matters, including any matters to be determined by our board of directors. In other words, the Supreme Board of Directors tells everybody else that we don't care about your opinion. Mm -hmm. Shareholders, we don't care about you. If we wanted your opinion, we would have given it to you. <laughs> So they're basically saying that Alibaba Partnership can overrule the board of directors. Everything, yeah. Right. And that's basically President Xi Jinping yes. and his Chinese oligarchs. It's so beautiful. Now, here's oh, there the, you here's go. There's the SoftBank. statistic. Oh, yeah. SoftBank owns approximately 29% of our outstanding ordinary shares and its interests may differ from those of our other shareholders. Michael, you uh, brought to surface last week this bank called SoftBank. Fill folks in on what that is. Uh, it's a huge international bank that's um, heavily invested in technology that um, is on paper headquartered in Japan, but it appears largely organized and controlled by U.S. banks and venture capital companies. They're they're pretty much, they've got their fingers in everything. Let me find this. Uh, well, SoftBank is soft money. So once they get the oh, system set up, they just, it flows in. But why is it flowing to Japan? Why is it there? That's just where the headquarters. I mean, as, as we know, ever since we uh, occupied Japan, it's pretty much been a vassal sure. of the U.S. Yeah, absolutely. And so, like the Japanese uh, phone companies run by the NSA, has been from the beginning. When we defeat someone, we do like to put it in our listening devices. <laughs> you probably know that <coughs> firsthand. I wouldn't have any knowledge <laughs> of that firsthand, no, not me. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, my dad was in the occupation force for Japan. My father was in the Liberation Force for Italy. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. It's amazing what these people did in just the last uh, generation before us. And now, here's the battle right here. Mm -hmm. It's right there in the friggin' screen. Yes. And it's in legal language, so you can't understand it. And poor Jack Ma, they're going to kill you if their stock goes down, because they're going to need yours. Sorry, Jack. No matter where you hide. And, and that's true for all these oligarchs. Oh, this is interesting. I haven't read this one, but... Let's just read this one. The equity holders, directors, and executive officers of the vari variable interest entities may have potential conflicts of interest with their company. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why would you invest in a company where you're being told that the people running the company have conflicts of interest? Yeah. you got to go along with that. Yeah. yeah, somehow. PRC laws, People's Republic of China laws, provide that a director and an executive officer owes a fiduciary duty to the company he or she directs or manages. So does U.S. law. The directors and executive officers are the variable interest entities, including with respect to VIEs, I don't know what those are, that have not completed the VIE structure enhancement. Uh, Jack Ma, our lead founder and executive chairman, and with respect to VIEs that have completed or will soon complete the VIE structure enhancement, the relative, the relevant members of the Alibaba Partnership or 
our management must act in good faith and in the best interest of the variable interest entities and must not use their respective positions for personal gain, which is pretty much business judgment rule according to Delaware law. On the other hand, as a director of our company, Jack and other relevant individuals have a duty of care and loyalty to our company and to our shareholders as a whole under Cayman Islands law. We control our variable interest entities through contractual arrangements and the business and operations of our variable interest entities are closely integrated with the business and operations of our search subsidiaries. Nonetheless, conflicts of interest for these individuals may arise due... You always look for the last thing a lawyer writes. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, conflicts of interest for these individuals may arise due to dual roles both as an equity holder, director, and executive officers of the variable interest entities and as directors or employees of our company. Ugh. This is typical legal cover your butt. We're going to do whatever we want stuff. And these uh, variable interest entities, uh, this is basically indicating to me that this is some people will have some shares here. We're going to get different returns on their investment, and that would probably be the Central Committee. Well, it could be, and it could also be, um, well, we have this other company, which completely conflicts with this company, mm -hmm. and if we happen to make a decision in this company that hurts this company, it's okay, because we told you it was going to happen. Yeah, okay, I see. So what is the purpose of all this? It's to, for the lawyers and the accountants and the officers and the shareholders to all cover their butts and do whatever they want. And for those people who are foolish enough to invest in Alibaba, this is crazyville. Okay, so but you've got Hillary within trust and Axiom and everything all shifting over to China, right? Is this part well, of this Alibaba? Will cover that. This will okay, cover we'll cover all it. This stuff. So when China when Trump comes out and says that China is the enemy, he could grab everybody in the swamp with this one play of China is the enemy. Well, already we have the fact that China has done those ads, you know, which is uh, basically meddling in the election. So now we can put mm -hmm. sanctions on them. And so Hillary, if she's being co truly connected through Shanghai to China and through other Chinese connections, this could be heard very terribly. He could simply start putting sanctions on things for China, and then that would be it. China would could literally collapse, as we did and to Japan, and turn them into a vassal of ours after we allowed them to buy up everything, right? And then... Mm -hmm. Made, then we bought it back pennies on the dollar, they became our vassal, then we went in and we restructured the way that their entire culture ran uh, and the way that money was inherited. We do the same thing with China. Uh, we collapse their economy in a minute. We could collapse their currency in a half a minute. So this is just indicating to me that Alibaba is the next Amazon on steroids this includes everything, Definitely. and then the Americans thought that they were creating the deals through Goldman Sachs and John Breyer, and then what really James happened? James Breyer. James Breyer and John, his dad. Oh, okay. That they, Sorry. That, that they were all investing in China, thinking it was going to be the big deal, and this is basically showing what we have said all along: it's going to collapse because people won't want to invest in it because when the Chinese government, which never lets loose of anything, pulls back the drawstrings on this. They can do anything they want. And it's written right in their papers. Oh, that they you signed it? it? They've told you. You agree? It could happen. That's how they Oh, right there. Restrictions on currency exchange may limit our ability to utilize our PRC revenue effectively. Did you just hear that? Exactly what I just said. <laughs> you did. I just said they're going to, all we have to do is manipulate their currency. But they say, oh no, you manipulate our currency. We simply manipulate everything else and we take all your money and you're just out of luck. <laughs> Sorry, we closed that company and we're not giving any of your money back. That's what they just said. It's just beautiful. Fluctuations in exchange rates could result in foreign currency exchange losses to us. What I just said. Just predicted it. There it is. <laughs> and then they admitted, oh, how about this one? Does it say anywhere here? Um, and American investors, shareholders, and board members may be killed at any time. Where is that clause? Hey, let me look. I'm sure it's in there because they basically say they're going to take your children, they're going to do whatever else they want, because that's what China does. Why would anyone ever trust China? Nothing from China would I trust. Maybe that's why I have a distrust for computers and little 
uh, phones and all those fancy devices that you, Lord McKibben, helped uh, you know get all this going. None of this would have happened without you, you know that. Yeah. And so. we call him Lord McKibben because. Because he's been attacking the Brits so much that they tried... They have they, not been attacking the Brits. That they, they, they gave him uh, some kind of honorary I knightship, I think. Was it the part you had landed gentry now over there? <laughs> trying to buy you off? Because you have, you, you've you just been saying some bad things about the Queen's Privy Council. No, I have not. I've just been the pointing truth. out facts. Yeah, I, that's true. But they're you not said pretty. that. They're not pretty. And uh, what we notice is that... Uh, Lockheed Martin, did you see that, that, that all those uh, Lockheed Martin stealth planes all basically are all, they're all oh, crashed. Oh, were, were those Lockheed Oh, Martin? The her, those were, those were. Were they? Those were uh, Boeing Lockheed Martin stealth planes. In must, other words, Queen they must, they and mostly Queen. Needed to replace them. And they couldn't run them. They couldn't get them running. And so they acted like the hurricane destroyed them. Mm. You know what I always say? Lockheed Martin builds a certain a number of planes, right? But nobody ever goes out to count them. They don't build all those planes. That's a lie. Or they get, look at with the F-22. They built all those planes. Only one third of them ever work at one time. And so when they can't get all those to work, they have a hurricane hit it, which was an engineered hurricane. Mm. They couldn't fly them out. Why couldn't they fly them out? Because they don't work. They're hit by the hurricane. Now they can write it all off, can't they? And then it's not a bad plane anymore. Just like the they did with the Titanic. Yes. Or with 9-11, with the Twin Towers. If they want to get it off their books, they just destroy it. Exactly. Well, read, read this one. Oh, Lordy. Read it. That's too long. No, no. <laughs> you have to read it. You uh, have to read this one. This one's good. This is good? Yeah. I'm going to get a laugh out of this You one. are. Okay. Our shareholders may face difficulties in protecting their interests and their ability to protect their rights to the U.S. federal courts. Did, they, did I read that wrong? Our shareholders may face difficulties in protecting their interests and their ability to protect their rights through the U.S. federal courts. Though, that's, I think they mean bad, though. Bad though, perhaps though the U.S. federal courts may be limited because we are incorporated under Cayman Islands law. We conduct substantially all our operations in China and most of our directors and substantially all of our executive officers reside outside the United States. In other words, we are immune. We're telling you right up front that this is a scam. We don't pay taxes, especially the ones that are the special people they just mentioned there, and there's nothing you can do about it in the United <laughs> States of America. That is, that's one of the best clauses well, the lawyers ever made, I think, well, isn't they, it? They took four paragraphs to explain that. Oh, well, but they, how, how many sentences was that, though, that just that was good. That basically said they're ripping them off, everyone off who was any part of this that wants to... But come on, invest into Alibaba. What's wrong with you? Don't you have a little change you can invest in Jack Ma? He's cute. Come on, can't we get some money to oh, Jack. back cute Jack Ma? Notice how they always, you know, get these kind of idiots who then are the representative of these companies that are just, you know, mega companies. And this is the front guy. And the front guy, you ask him, how do you how do you spell Alibaba? And he goes, I uh, I don't know. Hey, how about how about a little less bloviating and a little bit more giving people some interesting information um, you guys are pulling up. Hey, he's having the, you know, sometimes he says to me, I went through 400,000 pages of SEC documents today, and I'm really happy because I got two paragraphs. But they are the paragraphs you want. They are the ones that take down the evil cabals. Sailor, is that is that the... Oh, that's funny. Okay, here we that's go. That's really bad stuff. Regulation of telecommunications and internet information services. As a subsector of, subsector of the telecommunications industry, internet information services are regulated by the Administrative Measures on Internet Information Services, or the ICP measures, prom promulgated on September 25th of 2000 by the State Council and amended on January 8th of 2011. Internet information services are defined as blah, 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 blah. To the extent the internet information services provided relate to the certain matters, including news, publication, education, or medical and health care, approvals must be obtained, must also be obtained from the relevant industry regulator in accordance with the laws, rules, and regulations governing those entities. 
In other words, they pre-screen everything. They don't screen it afterwards. They pre-screen everything. Yeah. The wow. principal regulations governing advertising businesses in the China are the Advertising Law of the People's Republic of China, China the Advertising Administrative Regulations, 1987, Regulation on Internet Information Services, 2016, inter Interim Measures for Administration of Internet Advertising, 2016. You know that if you steal a bike in China, you know what the uh, punishment is? Death. Almost everything that you do in China that's against the law, the law, the punishment is death. So where is the death clause in here? There's got to be a death clause that says <laughs> that if you dial, if you if you have one wrong Google uh, inquiry, it means death, and it'll come straight through your keyboard. Okay, look, look. Well, that's why they have to steal Just so many of our this. patents because. They aren't a society that is allowed to creatively think, exactly. right? You can't exactly. go beyond certain boundaries, and now it'll be even worse with this social scoring. And so what happens to creativity? Because creativity, as we Gone. know, is living on the edge. It's a risk. I'm not going to do it. No. Why would I bother? Oh, you could die from it. But they will still need things, so they're going to be sucking off the U.S. Patent Office. Oh, yes. Exactly. Oh, yes. Which is, okay. of course, controlled so, by the Brits. I just Don't want to show you this. Off. I'm not going to read it. Oh, y'all right. talked over look each other. This. Okay, here we go. This should be good. Read this one. You read it. No! The whole thing? Just this one short paragraph. The PRC government has promulgated measures relating to Internet content through various ministries <laughs> and agencies, <laughs> including the MIIT, the News Office of the State Council, nothing truth ministry about that. Oh, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism and the General Administration of Press and Publication. So there it is, the Ministry of Truth controls everything and they pre-screen it before it goes out. And if you made a mistake, I'm waiting for the death clause, I bet it's going to be well, a death clause. Well, how is this any there. different than the mainstream media reading stuff off of ISIS management systems or Avid? Not much difference at all. Matter of fact, this is Not just much. a... This is a little bit this more, is more sophisticated. Yeah, sophisticated and a little bit further crazy out there, wild uh, digital prison. But this is where we're thing. going. Oh, this is where we. This is we it. Are this, is it. A, this is the document. This is the future. The future is, is here right now. Is this what Hillary is living to yes. push down this on all of us? This is why I wanted you to read this. Yes. So read that next sentence. Uh, next sentence. In addition to various approval and license requirements, these measures specifically prohibit internet activities that result in the dissemination of any content which is found to contain pornography. Ah, oh, shucks. That's the biggest interest on in the internet. Stop it. Promote gambling, or vi uh, gambling's the second, and violence is the third. Instigate crimes. In other words, they, there's going to be no internet in China. Undermine public morality or the cultural traditions, as I pointed out, of the PRC, or compromise state security or secrets, which they always add because anything could be that. But that literally, it literally says, if it is not approved by the committee, it will not exist. Exactly. But we in America, we can't stop radical Islamic terrorism online because we're told no one owns the internet, no one can control the internet. Okay, uh, hello, more, they can. More. Here we go. So this is regulations on broadcasting audio and video programs through the internet. Read that. <laughs> the only reason I had to listen to you is because you're older than me and I respect my elders, okay? On April 13, 2000, yeah, well, <laughs> 2005, the State Council, I love it. The State Council. Oh, I love it when they say State Council. I don't know what that means, but it scares me. Sorry. <laughs> on April 13, 2005, the State Council announced several decisions on investment by non-state-owned companies in culture-related business banks. in China, yes. Mm -hmm. These decisions encourage and support non-state-owned companies to enter certain culture-related business in China, subject to restrictions and prohibitions for investment in audio-video broadcasting website news and certain other businesses by non-state-owned companies. So, in other words, invest what you want but it doesn't matter if we want we 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 restrict what you can invest in anyway. So you don't you can only invest what we tell you can. Then we control the investment. This they've covered all the bases of this one. How long does this one thing go on? We're not even. Speaking. I know you're not happy until you get like seventy, see, eighty thousand pages into a document. Okay. This, this tells you. Everything, everything, everything. Yeah, pretty much. There's everything. nothing you can do. We aren't controlling your electric toothbrush. We have control of that too. 
Yeah, everything. Drug information. Oh yeah. News. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, what they're basically probably built in here is, if we look with our facial recognition, uh, recognition uh, tools through your computer, and we find that you're having a bad thought, then we can do whatever well, we want to. This is a good one. You got to read that one. Regulation on Internet Culture Activities on February 17, 2011. The Ministry of Culture, which always worries me, they're the ones who make the rules that one day you can have one child, or two children, the next day you can have one child, all the others have to be murdered, killed. That's the Ministry of Culture, in case you didn't know that is, folks. On February 17, 2001, the Ministry of Culture, everyone bow. The predecessor of the Ministry of Culture and Tourism promulgated the Internet Culture Administration Tentative Measures, or the Internet Culture Measures, which was most recently amended in December 2017. That's that's the uh, social uh, the credit system they have. Pretty much. That they just said that that's what they can do. That the Internet Culture Measures require ICP operators engaging in Internet Culture activities to obtain a permit from the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. The term Internet Culture Activities includes, among other things, online dissemination of Internet culture products such as audiovisual video products, gaming products, performances of plays or programs, works of art and cartoons, and the production, reproduction, importation, publication, and broadcasting of Internet cultural products. So in other words, this is a good deal if you happen to be selling those products. <laughs> Right? If you're selling communist stuff, it's a good deal. this is one heck of a good deal, man, because you know that that is a going market over there, you know, with the re-education uh, centers yeah. and all. You know, the re-education centers where they well, what yell. What are we going to do to make sure that this does not encroach upon us any further here in the United States or other parts of the world that don't want this system? Well, we I mean, watch this, Trump stomp on it. This is just unbelievable that, that an American audit, auditor, auditing company, Wrote this crap, and or allowed it, or anybody. This is approved. And, and, Who and approved America, this? And, and America, <laughs> well, you don't have to approve of an SEC filing, but what the SEC has to do is approve whether it's legal or not. Well, that's the point. And then these standards that they have some standards. Well, the Chinese don't have a constitution, so. Yeah, but this isn't filed in China. This was filed in well, the why U.S. Why is it filed in the United States if this is all about China and? To warn investors. This is to not warn, but disclose to investors the risks that they take if they invest in China. Warn in, them. In this <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> then, so then Hillary, if Hillary invests in China, she thinks that she's going to come out ahead and on top of the Chinese. Correct. Whoa, well, is she a I mean, warped I mean, woman? A Do you know the Chinese she's, will roll right over her? But she's on Walmart board, and she did win. She already won. When 65% of our manufacturing went to China, Hillary won, and she became as po more powerful in China than even the British Kingdom ever was. Well, why is she scrounging around running a book tour? Because this is pointing out that her bet on Shanghai Gold went kind of south on her. <laughs> Oh, Stupid yeah. Hilda Beast. They're basically saying we're going to do whatever we oh, want. Oh, we're going to. Here's. I just want to mention this. I mean, I'm not done. I mean, there's like 50 pages of this stuff. Only 50. That's why you thought this was just cheap entertainment tonight. Okay. <laughs> Real <laughs> short. This was the short entertainment you were yeah. going to share with us. No, I. I want to reiterate something. Stuff. In China, when you commit a crime, certain crimes, they shoot you in the head with a bullet and they charge your family for the bullet. Not only that, when you're in prison in China, I don't know if it's still true, but 35 years ago, 10 years ago when I investigated this, it was still true. You're put in prison in China, if your family doesn't feed you, you starve. They don't feed you. Hmm. That's very effective. It really cuts down on crime. <laughs> if the pro, listen, if the, no, this is all true. If the punishment for stealing a bike is death, are you going to steal a bike? No. They have very few bikes stolen in China. <laughs> this I'm not making this up. Twenty million Tibetans were murdered. Well, then you should be running. I, Dalai Lama is a friend of mine, you know, and I once said to him, Mr. Lama. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you called hey, him. Dalai. Does you call him the, your holiness? 
No, but it, yes, you do. That's okay. What you're I, I right. don't call it that. I call it this real name. Oh, you really do? Yeah, but it's you know him that well. Yeah, it's, wow. it, it, you don't want to know his real name. He seems like he's like a real humorous guy. He likes my hair. to laugh. And he's wonderful. He's the kindest, mm -hmm. most gentle person you'd ever want to meet, next to Lord McKibben, of course. <laughs> no, but yeah, he he basically. I said to him, "Look, uh, uh, Mr. Dolly, uh, they say only a few hundred thousand people, maybe a million, died in the, in the pogrom in Tibet." How many do you know confirmed? He says, 20,000 temples, uh, Wang Po, that's what he called me. 20,000 temples, Wang Po, and 20 million Tibetans. Mm. And now they've confirmed. 20 million Tibetans, one of the, you know, one of the large, right up there with Stalin, one of the larger pogroms, just mad, almost genocide. They didn't make a genocide because they turned Tibet into a, basically, a Disney World. And so they have high-speed trains going up there to to uh, to Lhasa, Lhasa the Patala Palace, and we're to, to right. Lhasa. They saved a few things for show. Yes. It's like the Soviets exactly. used to do. Exactly. It's nothing more than what would you call that a theme park? Right. It's a theme park now, and it's disgusting because it, they're still the the uh, I don't even know the communist control of the Tibetan people is disgusting, and uh, they. Of course, they believe that they have their own Dalai Lama, uh, fake Dalai Lama, and so they literally give out this propaganda as if it's just like all of the religions. Here is the communist version of Tibetan Buddhism, or here's the communist version of Catholicism. Or, right. You know, you see what's going on over there. Right. They is, they they call this the uh, Sinonization. I call it the China. Sinonization, yes. China, China. It's called the. I would call it the Chinaization of the world, and it is nothing more. Than the worst dictatorial totalitarianism I've ever seen in history. Right. And if people don't understand that Trump is in a fight, he's already won the currency war by proving that there's 8,000 tons of fake gold that was going to back up the yuan, right? You know that, remember? Mm -hmm. Remember we went into that going crazy? Now, now the very city that that was happening in, Shanghai, is where Hillary has moved. Probably the most powerful internet company that there's ever been. And so what we have here is Hillary is always at the cutting edge trying to be more powerful than the queen, right? But now she's going to go down. Trump is going to squish them. And it's just going to be beautiful. Well, uh, Alibaba needed the Axiom data and the Entrust keys mm. in order to bring all of this functionality to the U.S. Oh, also, to do what they just put there and what they say they're doing, to limit what they allow, to limit, limit, limit. Right. The uh, the uh, digital key certification the trust authorities and agreements certification basically what I always right. call Hillary's crypto well, keys and trust the internet uses they would have to have that to be able to turn off things and right. say no you can't do that no you right. can't do that right yes Does so they would have to go to China or China wouldn't be able to pull off Dragonfly well a few days ago what was that all about about the internet and going down for forty eight hours I know you wrote us a little something in Truth News headlines you want well, to say something about they that they said that uh, Icon was going to take down the internet for a day or so to do some sort of upgrade it's just totally silliness what do you think what's you, really going on you don't on? need to do that with a system as redundant as that is that would never happen all right so Unless what would they, they really were to up to some test some test to see if but well, probably get people used to the idea that it could go down and they wouldn't know why perhaps they're getting ready to see if they're uh, they're ready to make the flip the switch so Hillary can control it from Shanghai well I mean if, if you really want to shut things down that's the way to do it mm -hmm. Turned off. And the ICANN numbers have nothing to do with shutting nothing down. They're just numbers. It's no, just no, identification, no, 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 right? No, they'll shut everything down. What, what do you mean if you turn off the ICANN numbers? If you turn the ICANN numbers off, everything goes down on the internet. Then are they part of every single key certificate recognition in the no, crypto? Part of it. I mean, they have to be part of that? No, no the, the, it's a different issue. The, the ICANN issue is that the basically it's the street address, addresses for the internet. Right. So if you turn all those off, then you can't get to any website. Or, you, or okay. you can select the websites you don't want people to go to. So with that digital handshake, they have to have the ICANN number. That's ICANN in addition. Number. Once you right. can get the connection through ICANN, then it's the digital handshake after that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So then the ICANN could be connected to 
her moving this stuff as we now know. They're moving it so rapidly. Well, to we Shanghai. know ICANN is, is, is associated with Obama and Hillary. We know that. Because, uh, what's his name? Crocker. Crocker. Stephen Crocker. Stephen, what's his middle initial? I can't remember. Stephen P. Stephen, Stephen P. P. Crocker. Crocker, correct, yeah. Right. Stephen P. Crocker. Uh, he's, been, he's been with them since the um, Highlands Forum days. He controlled all ICANN numbers. I mean, he's one dude. The whole one dude. And then one day he says, yeah, I don't want to do this no more. I have control of every thing on the internet. I'm just going to throw it out to anybody who wants to take it. Now we don't even know who that committee is. We don't even know who runs that committee. Right. We know it's an international committee. We were never told who. Correct. Unbelievable. But it's okay because Sir Timothy Bernard Lees has come along to create a whole new internet and it's going to be just beautiful because that's what he does in the spare time. Yeah. Okay, I need my desk back now because i got to get put out Truth News headlines. So could you boys take your meeting someplace sure. else? Sure. Let's go down to the We haven't, we got haven't any fresh read, coffee? We haven't read about 40 pages of this. I know. Disclosure. You don't stop, do you? You're just a research hound. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's disgusting. Why would anybody invest That's the most in absurd thing I've ever read that was a part of a... Top, trying I mean, to write I, the I've company's read a lot good. of these SEC documents. I've never read anything like this where we're saying... Basically, we're going to do whatever you want if you want to put money in this, and you're the fool. That's what this is saying. Now, I can summarize this. If I was doing a Chinese gold company, I would say, uh, we're going to sell you gold 